What a privilege, what a privilege to be back with you again. And just thank you for taking the time to listen to me sharing my heart. I hope always based on biblical principles. This is the final day of uh, the Christian resource exhibit over in the famous Sundown racetrack. I was there, I guess, on Tuesday and shared at a seminar, but uh, we have a Roy Hessian Book Trust display there. Met some dear, dear friends, especially Keith Danby, who I had not seen for a while, who uh, was once the director of the whole great Wesley Owen STL uh, business ministry. Bud has been linked with us in so many ways. And he now, as many irons in the fire, <clears throat> but he's involved with this Bible, immersed reading Bible. Um, if your church is interested in having um, a Bible that can really help them get into the word of God in small groups, which is the idea, of course, it can be used privately as well. I'd urge you to get in, in touch with them. I don't know if you can read this email immersebible.com I'll just put it right by the camera I don't think I just got this so I guess you can't read that immerse bible i m m e r s e b i b l e.com and or just email me and I can make sure you get uh some information because I think it's uh, it's worth your church looking into that um, small group approach to reading the Bible uh, together. I was so encouraged when in the Daily Telegraph, I came across this fantastic blog of Brother Andrew, of course, a close friend who went to be with Jesus a couple weeks ago. I talked to him, talked to you about him in one of my previous blogs close friend, ministered at OM conferences. But in the Daily Telegraph obituaries, you don't have many biblical people being featured. And the whole article was quite positive. I heard the Times did an article. And we just pray that all that goes out in connection with his home going will challenge people to be more radical for Jesus mm. as he was. Well, the title uh, may have grabbed you for this particular uh, session. Seven uh, things we humans do that are not funny. I've always encouraged a sense of humor. I've used a lot of humor in my messages. And I once even for a group of teenagers, long story did uh, stand up comedy, telling of so many funny things that have happened in my life. Some of them actually weren't so funny. Maybe that led me to this title, Seven Things That Aren't Funny. And I hope the Spirit of God convicts us in these seven areas to control our tongue and to be wiser in what we say and what we do, which we know can only take place through it fellowship with the Lord Jesus in the reality of the crucified life so powerfully presented in the book Calvary Road and followed up on with we would see Jesus. Remember, we are happy to send some of these to you as a gift, depending on what part of the world. Number one, it's not funny to make fun of people, especially talking behind their back things that are unkind and negative. But I've seen situations where people made fun of someone right in front of them. Of course, this also leads, uh, especially among younger people, to bullying. I've studied the subject of bullying, read part of a fantastic book by a woman who is well known today, and what she suffered from bullying, especially as a girl. And it's sad that this is still happening in most school systems uh, in the world. It can be very, very subtle. 
talking behind people's backs is different, but it's sort of in the same category. It isn't funny. People get hurt. The hurt sometimes affects them the rest of their life. And so may we be more prayerful and careful in this area. And I've sinned against my own wife when uh, I've done some things around the house that obviously said that sort of made fun of her. I don't think I've done that in public, especially to do it in public is, is it's so wrong. But we're still learning. We're still growing. Let's, let's keep aiming high. Number two, it's not funny. This is going to surprise you. Uh, when you just talk too much. And I've had that experience with people. They just go on and on. You can't hardly get a word in. It's a sign that people are mainly concerned about their life and what they've been through, which, of course, is important. But if they would just stop and also allow the person uh, to share, to respond. In other words, we need to learn to listen. And again, a lot of people get hurt, especially when someone tries to share with someone that they really talk too much. Then that person gets offended. And I just pray we may be wise in that area. And number three, of course, is incredibly hard to talk about in our culture, but it's not funny to just eat too much. Billy Graham, in his brilliant book, Seven Deadly Sins, that I read when I first arrived in the UK 60 years ago, is one of the few that has a chapter about gluttony. And clearly he shows from the word of God the sin of gluttony. Yet we often uh, make fun of anything connected with, uh, with overeating. And of course, it's a sensitive issue. But I just believe even if our progress may be slow, we should not eat too much. And then number four, it's not funny when you make a mess. Again, this has been a complexity in my home and in my marriage because I'm a mess maker. And I used to laugh at times at some of the areas where my wife would try to uh, try to correct me. And I learned the hard way that making a mess is not funny. Um, one of the things that happens sometimes in messy houses is people have terrible falls because they slip on something. And they fall over a briefcase that's been left in the wrong place, which is exactly what happened and my wife's house in Idaho, and that fall uh, increased her already existing back problems. Uh, pray for me as I keep trying to improve uh, in this area. It touches, of course, many other areas. We don't have the time to go into that. Number five, it's not funny to lack manners and, and just be rude, especially in the homes of other people. The teams that went to India in the early days, and there's a whole fantastic book about that now that I'm sending out to people who give some kind of gift for the work in India. But those teams would stop at the home of some workers um, in Turkey, in Ankara, Turkey. And they experienced a lot of young people staying in their home and they were shocked at the manners. And so they actually wrote a leaflet, which for maybe 30 years I distributed on the subject of manners, developing good manners. It's not funny, especially if you're in the home of someone that might be reluctant to have you in their home. They might be skeptical about you and your ministry. They might've been under pressure to have you. I heard of a case where a friend of mine went into someone's home and immediately picked up the phone and made a long distance phone call. That's a no, no. You can't do that on someone else's phone without asking them. Uh, some, someone else picked up in someone's home after arriving, just picked up some of the books off the bookshelf. Seems like a small thing. 
And some homes, they wouldn't, they could care less. But what if you hit a home where for them that, that is wrong? Uh, respecting people's property, being courteous uh, is, I believe, an important part of our growth and grace and our effort to see Jesus and to become more like him. And then, of course, it's not funny when people are texting and phoning when they're driving a car. Driving is surely one of the most serious uh, tasks that any of us have. Most of the people who have died in the history of OM, close to 40, have died in car accidents. That, by the way, is not many. When you consider 200,000 people have served with OM and the huge use of vehicles. Oh, I thank the Lord for the leaders who have put a strong emphasis on safety. You used to not be able to drive an OM vehicle without the OM driver's test on top of the regular test you do for your license. And uh, we all know of accidents reported in the press that have taken place because people were talking on the phone or texting. I think the total hand-free phone, of course, is a much better situation, but it still takes our attention. And in driving, it seems to me, we need full attention. Mistakes made in the area of driving cost people's lives. And it's worth being extra prayerful and extra careful in that whole area. And number seven, and of course, you could give a list of many more, so could I, but we're limiting ourselves because we also limit these blogs to 15 minutes. But it's not funny when people are just careless and disorganized. Details are important. Think of someone that you became friends with, you got linked with, you got their phone number with good intentions of keeping contact, and you lost the phone number. I hope you have a system for addresses. We have no excuse now with laptops and smartphones at our fingertips. But if I myself, with all my weaknesses, had not learned at a very young age about organizing, and keeping track of things and getting those addresses and the phone numbers. Later on, of course, I got the help of other people. I would have never been able to accomplish what I, uh, by God's mercy, with teams of other people have been able to do around the world. We should never really boast about being disorganized or much less about being careless. One of the keys that could help in so many situations, and I didn't practice it enough, is especially if we make a commitment to write it down. And one of my failures in life is just off the cuff, tell someone I was going to do something, I was going to send a book. I didn't write it down and they never got it. Again, some people, they handle that with no difficulty, but other people, uh, feel well. I never meant any, meant anything to him uh, anyway. Communicating love is directly linked. It's directly linked to some degree with being organized and being disciplined. Well, I hope these seven areas uh, will be a challenge, and that yes, we could pray for one another. And if you ever need specific prayer on any one particular issue, um, or if there's something I've said in any of my blogs uh, that you'd like to ask about, especially the things that I offer free, and I really would like to hear from you at george.berwer at om.org. It does mean a lot to me to hear from people. We are not hearing people as a result of this blog. We do get a lot of comments on Facebook, some of them related to my written blogs, which I put on Facebook, but the videos come there as well. God bless you. Hope I hear from some of you uh, this week, and there'll be a lot to share next week.